Derrida, Marx, and venture capital. Postmodernism generated many ideas about ideas, language, certainty, and even physics. Many of those ideas were incorrect or based upon premises that were incomplete. Those ideas influenced academics and policymakers. Derrida's ideas about language certainty and the relationship of social organizations to language heavily influenced American educators and the American left and continue to do so. Communism influenced the world, as it was roughly presented by Karl Marx and too was usually misunderstood. Perhaps there are three basic threads that went into forming postmodern concepts regarding skepticism and the ability to have certainty concerning objective events and even reality. One is the rise of linguistic philosophy and developments in the philosophy of language, and the other is quantum mechanics, the Schrodinger wave function collapse, and the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. The final thread is that of epistemology, the theory of knowledge. Philosophers like W. V. O. Quine and P. F. Strassen combined the fields of epistemology, logic, and language within their work. Jean-Paul Sartre observed the organizing principle in forms of society subjectively and being a nothingness in the critique of dialectical reason, taking the structures at face value without historical analysis. Toretta followed these philosophers in time and formulated an excellent abstract of the way language forms in society. Ludwig Wittgenstein's work on explaining how language meanings arise preceded that of Derrida by nearly a half century. For example, the Blue and Brown books, Derrida seemed to make some of the same mistakes as Aristotle in overestimating the reliability of words, additionally overestimating their strength in forming social structures. Karl Marx was the greatest historical social analyst writer of his day, witnessing poverty and the oppression of concentrated wealth with royalty firsthand. He sought a political remedy for it rather than to advocate a tax increase on the wealthy, he sought complete revolution to end social inequality. With England of his time being somewhat like post-communist revolution in Shanghai and the pathos of civilian deaths among the poor and having fathered several children, his desire to improve social conditions for the poor was personal as well as compassionate. In some respects, his ideas were ahead of their time, as well as partly incorrect. Marx's work prescriptively were his best theories for how to reform society to a more just extent. Plainly, he made numerous errors in that regard. One of Marx's famous and misunderstood expressions that might be used to highlight the uncertainty of language is from each according to his ability to each according to his needs. That remark could be from classical economics concerning the allocation of resources to attain maximum economic productivity, with each individual would produce according to his ability, perhaps with social support and education and training to be the best that he or she can be, and venture capital would provide funds to innovators and developers according to his or her needs. In Marx's England, perhaps the ordinary citizen that desired to be an entrepreneur or to develop an invention could not find the capital to do so. Marx's expression has been interpreted in other ways to mean quite different things. That is an example of the incompleteness of language for defining meanings for objects and relationships. That occurs, words are different from the objects and relationships they describe. Words of practical communication value that arise from use and application rather than from the things in themselves. The entity that produces red fruit of a certain shape that is, does not also grow its name apple upon its branches. This would need to be need to if there were a direct relationship between word, name, and object. Ritter assumed that numerous mass social issues of his time, such as decolonization, racism, nationalism, and wars, originated because of cohesive language structures inherent in mass social organizations, social structures, and classes. Deconstructing social inequity could be achieved through language. Deconstruction as a tool for biblical criticism was especially popular because of the rise of Darwinian evolution theory and the changes that drove pop, uh, concepts of genesis epistemology and changes that drove through popularization of scientific thought in the field of education and popular concepts of genesis cosmology. Marxists were especially anti-theistic and atheistic. The left became militant for social evolution revolutions based on a wave of postmodernist atheist ideology that regarded itself as post-ideological after the end of the Cold War that Joe Biden has renewed perhaps because of memory cognitive issues and the preference that the first Cold War never really ended. Derrida was understandably accused by some of being an anarchist for trying to dissolve existing social institutions and establishments through the deconstruction of language in order to create something better without having a clear idea of what that was. 
Yet Derrida simply extrapolated too far from the basis of his rather sound language structure ideas to the reason why social organizations arise to start with and to the role they play in societies. Adam in the garden named objects brought before him. His words didn't create the objects. Derrida's followers believed that by changing the words and deconstructing the languages and history, it would change the objects, social structures. Derrida's over-belief in the power of language and in the uncertainty and malleability of its meanings were developed in post-World War II Europe, where a chaos of languages manifest destruction of social order and problems of nationalism and colonialism were evident firsthand. Within the post-war cauldron of a babel of languages and wrecked of Europe, Nimrod would have had difficulty making sense so far as social organization goes, a new way for the left to view social reality developed. It was, in effect, a popular epistemological system based in misunderstanding the philosophy of language, quantum physics, and history. The German physicist Werner Heisenberg found that one could find the position of a quantum particle like the photon or its speed, yet not both, simultaneously. Quanta exist in a wave, theoretically, at all possible positions traveling at a certain speed. When one collapses the wave in making a measurement at a particular point, it does not deter- that does determine the position of a quanta, though not the speed, since it should be a wave in motion. That was the uncertainty principle and eventually in the popular conception that developed a meaning that reality could not be understood or knowledge trustworthy. Coupled with Derrida's deconstruction of language for reliability and certainty, the left had powerful tools to reinforce skepticism, truth, and logic. Simultaneous criticisms of Descartes' dualist spirit matter epistemology and preference for the materialism and atheism of Karl Marx and Ludwig Feuerbach, coupled with biblical criticism that regarded the word of God's scripture as literature, could be credited without a preponderance of error as the main rationale for the present social state of affairs of the left. Deconstruction elevated somewhat superficial philosophers like Friedrich Nietzsche, while the public were generally not reading analytic philosophers in the subtle epistemology of Quine's word and object, or P.F. Strassen's individuals. Human social organizations like those of penguins in the wild kingdom generally evolved with adaptations to the environment. If humans were without language capacity, it would still organize in some way. Human organization evolved to address common biological and existential challenges. What is lacking is reform and adaptability in social organization. The 20th century had innumerable interesting queries into the foundations of knowledge and language. Chomsky and Everett developed different viewpoints on the question of grammar being innate in the human brain or learned or both. Perhaps it was Noam Chomsky's career as a linguist who regarded language phenomenally that made his political criticism so appealing to the left, since deconstruction of establishment politics was an important method of the era. I use the left within this essay in distinction to the right that generally is economically and socially more conservative or was in the era and doesn't seek to deconstruct anything. That fact has been in conflict and sometimes to general improvements and upgrades to select doctrines when new information becomes available or is developed through further research and insights. Biblical hermeneutics is one such field. There's no reason at all to think that God's not capable of using quantum mechanics paradigms although none are mentioned in the Bible explicitly, as if the people of the second millennium B.C. would have understood such references as gluons and quarks. Language is accreted lexicons and word groupings with meaning values understood by users. Languages arose when human cultures were rather isolated from other human cultures. To speak one language shares meanings throughout a culture without much confusion or ambiguity about meanings. The meanings are those used by convention and historical inclusion. Over time, words tend to lose their root original values that are comparable to algebraic variables that evolve different values over the course of the programs written by history and change. A culture of many languages greatly multiplies the uncertainty of the meaning of words. It is post-war Europe and the aftermath of defeating the German National Socialist Workers Party, also known as the Nazi Party, was one fraught with uncertainty of an historical and linguistic character. Language, like algebraic formulas, can have meaning and refer to real objects. Although philosophers are aware of the phenomenal nature these days of what and how objects are presented within the quantum fields that supports the existence of a universe. Valid language use is pragmatic and meanings as fine-tuned for accuracy as possible and practical. In using the word apple, for instance, one needn't prescribe, describe every possible configuration or appearance and circumstance of any apple that has ever or will ever exist. It does not negate 
the value of language and communication to abbreviate that constellation of possible value to the one present and necessary. This is common sense and the value of intelligence. Humans exist in a bottomless, unbounded experience, yet they wish to share communication about it with others, though uncertainty is an aspect of the unknown. Though uncertainty abounds in temporal ecstasis of past, present, and future, human experience existentially is certain on the pragmatic scale. God's word in the beginning generated waveform shaping quantum fields that formed reality. Human words do not shape reality from nothing, though human words can reflect intentions to reshape mass and energy, human language did not create the human race itself. Humans may shape existing matter and energy and form new organizations, yet human language is a way of expressing ideas and will comparable to algebraic formulae. God's word is omnipowerful in this universe. Human language is not.